Okay, so we're in the sixth parak um, of Sharachnia, the gate of, of humility, and we finished five of the attributes that re- really need to exist or do exist um, in a person who's truly humble. And uh, the different types of uh, things that that humble person does on a regular basis, uh, knowing God and how great he is, um, knowing what the Torah expects of him, to... Um, be able to maintain and to maintain strength and and uh, balance even despite the different pressures of life. Um, he bestows kindness upon people. Very good individual. Uh, we had mentioned uh, the, and the last one that we met, left with was um, that he conducts himself with humility in all different actions and whether whether they be external or internal. He's consistent. Um, Big people, little people, honorable people, not so honorable, is always a constant uh, manifestation of, of humility and perspective in dealing with all those people. So we're up to Hanaga Shishas. We left off at the sixth um, sort of virtue or uh, type of conduct that one has to constantly manifest. Hanaga Shishas, Hishia Bal Taiva Godo, Ubal Shifus Gavos Binyon Elmaba. Yeah, we might have just started this, and I don't think we really finished this paragraph, but the idea of, of having sort of almost, almost a desire, about taiv is a very interesting word, because generally the word taiv is connected to negative things, and here taiv is connected to a positive attribute. To literally be a, a person who is who's so desirous, um, who has a complete focus of, of high aspirations, high goals, when it comes to matters of the next world. Spiritual matters. Please stop it. And he never is satisfied. The person is never ready to say it's enough. That I'm 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 good enough. I'm I'm uh, spiritual enough. I'm accomplished enough. That type of mentality that I'm I'm it's okay. I reached a good enough height. And unfortunately, we hear from parents. He learned enough. What are you? Another year. He learned enough to already. Now he can go out and you know and uh, go get a job or do what he needs to do. And this whole idea that enough spirituality. That's something that certainly somebody who is a true, truly humble person who has a proper perspective of one's purpose in life, there's never going to be that sense of, of, of enough or complacency when it comes to my spiritual attainments. Um, never says enough um, when it comes to mitzvahs that are right there for that person to do when they're available. mitzvahs. Nor will he say it's enough when it comes to mitzvahs that he needs to put or she needs to ex- expend effort and energy for. It doesn't really matter what, how easy the mitzvahs are, how difficult the mitzvahs. It's never a mentality that, no, I'm, I'm not interested. And this person consistently sees his actions, his service, his abilities, and how much effort he's put in as too little in, in his eyes. There's always, you know, I'm not really, I didn't do a good enough job. And that person's soul is always looking to, to go higher and constantly yearning for a, a, a higher level, a greater level of, of spirituality, a closer connection to Gadish Baruch Hu. As was said about Yoshef the king, he lifted, his, he lifted up his heart. His heart was elevated and, and, and lifted in the way of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That there is a constant yearning for wanting to get closer. It's a passage that's quoted often about special people who are just so motivated to keep pushing and keep fighting and, and, and keep challenging themselves in, in in Ruchnius. The person is sort of always uh, bemoaning one's own per- spiritual accomplishment, uh, never feeling satisfied. And uh, whether it be in front of a Kaddish Baruch Hu saying to Kaddish Baruch Hu, I'm, I'm, what I'm doing is not enough. I really could do more. Please, Kaddish Baruch Hu, you know, I, I, help, me, help me accomplish more. And also in front of people, never a sense of smugness, a sense of complacency. Um, 
uh, um, and the, the, the lack of, of, of being satisfied is about uh, the fact that he has not fulfilled properly all of the goals that Akash Baruch Hu p- placed in front of him. Okay, we all have uh, certain missions in life. We all have to try to push ourselves to accomplish what we need to accomplish. And a person should always feel as much as you know, it's wonderful that, that we keep pushing and this person obviously is, is constantly pushing, but never allows that sense of complacency or a sense of accomplishment to set in. Again, some of us, you know, need a pat on the back and, you know, if we don't get it, we, we start getting a little shaky. So obviously if we need one, then we give ourselves one or we get one. But really at the end of the day, if we're truly, if we have the right perspective, we know that they're all nice, but at the end of the day, we're not, we should not be satisfied. There's constantly, there needs to be a constant push in, you know, what else can I do? Where can I, where can I grow? Where can I achieve more? Please straighten out my path to watch your statutes, to watch your, to observe your mitzvahs. There's always that desire to, to do more. Okay, that's six, this constant uh, yearning and pushing for higher levels. That's the sixth attribute. Hanoga hashviyasi she yisnahi bachno shubeda noshim. To conduct oneself with humility when the person's amongst other people. Let's see. The aniach as gavus ne kovra bore. And you leave by the door, so to speak, or you leave on the, on the side any type of of self-importance and gaiva and uh, sort of, uh, you know, uh, pomposity or a feeling of haughtiness, they cover up our, in, for the honor of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. In other words, uh, basically, that um, when it comes to the glory of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, nothing uh, stands in the way of me doing what I need to do. And the idea that I'm sort of now going to worry about my kavod in the place of HaKadosh Baruch Hu's kavod, that can never, that kind of thought can never get in there. The Yazovas Hagduvas Yikorvas Ves Hazihiru Hakvodo, Shovas Hashem. And when you're serving HaKadosh Baruch Hu, there's no thoughts you leave over your greatness and your royalty and your care about how you conduct yourself. Um, all goes by the wayside when it comes to Kavod Hashem. This is, again, something that, a lower actual avado, this is not only true when you're alone, where you have to sort of figure out about your own dignity and honor, because what's at stake now is the honor of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So now I, I become completely irrelevant right now at this point. Even if you're amongst other people, and you're in multitudes, the idea that, well, you know, I can't go all out in doing what I need to do for the sake of a Kaddish Baruch Hu, and, you know, a very good example of this, you know, we, the Ramam talks about it, that the people who are not willing to dance with all of their passion and all of their energy, let's say by Simcha's Torah, you know, where there are people who, you know, or by Hasan, the people say, you know, I'm, uh, I'm not going to, you know, go in the middle, I, I like to keep on the side, and, you know, I'm not going to, now, it's a mitzvah, and certainly when you're talking about Kavad, Simchas Taira, where we're dancing Kavad Taira, the Ramam talks about the Simchas Beis HaShoeva, that it was reserved for the, for the, you know, special people, the greatest people were the ones dancing. Everybody else, the general population was watching, and the, and the Gedolim were the ones dancing. And he says, anybody who says that it's pasmin, it, it's, you know, beneath me to get in there and, and get Lebedic and to really, he says, Mama, she, he rails into them and very, very, very negative speech. He calls them shaitim. He calls them fools, and and then the people who have no idea of what the emes is of Torah. So, and this is something that again that he is under underscoring here. That same type of concept. An amazing concept, you know. So one of the things that Aaron Cohen was given the, the the job to do was removing the ashes. Now Aaron Cohen was one of the most humble people. Uh, in, in, in human history. And yet, what does the Pasuk say? Despite his great stature of who Aaron HaKohen was, he was equal to Moshe Rabbeinu, right? That's why the, the Torah um, juxtaposes sometimes Moshe before Aaron, sometimes Aaron before Moshe, Rashi says, to teach us that they're equal. And yet, what job does Aaron have? The Hiram 
Aaron goes in there with his little uh, scooper, you know, uh, the, the dust or whatever, and he removes the ashes and he cleans up the Mizbeach inside the, inside the Hechel. Why would the Torah obligate him to clean up the ashes on a daily basis? In order for him to stay low and to lower oneself, to remove any type of haughtiness. Now, you think about Aaron Akko, what kind of haughtiness could Aaron Akko have? And does he really need to, to have this job? Well, you know, it, it doesn't seem like it's only that, you know, that we need it for the subsequent Kohanim, Gedolim. But it seems like even for Aaron or Kohen, it, it's, it's possible that something can get in there. And, uh, you know, you are the Kohen Gadol, and you are doing incredible things throughout the year, and certainly on Yom Kippur, you are the man to make it all happen in Yom Kippur. And just to keep that perspective, we're going to give you the job of, of removing the ashes. Just not to, you know... The, Famous story about a certain fellow in the yeshiva who was a little bit too full of himself, and you know, the Hoshva Kail guy, and he is a newlywed fellow. And you know, when the wife says, Can you please take out the garbage? and he says, You know, take out the guy, I don't take out the garbage. You know, you know who you're talking to? I'm a Hoshva Kail guy, I don't take out the garbage. And um, it's apparently a couple of nights later, there's a knock on the door, and uh, the Rosh Yeshiva of the yeshiva came to the, came to the door, and Rebbe opens the door, Rebbe, what can I do? What, what are you, what's the Rosh Yeshiva doing here? He says, oh, I, I came to take out the garbage. Okay, it's too hush for you to do, but I'll do it. You know, so delivering you know, the message that <laughs> needs to be delivered for all those people who, who don't get it right away. So, um, and this is, this is where things could, you know, a person could get too into himself and then too uh, fear, uh, a sense of self-importance and it needs, especially when it comes to Ratan Hashem, to do what Akash Baruch wants you to do and to stand up for, for the covet Hashem, there's, there's, you know, there's no excuse um, to you know, focus it on, on yourself when, when something else is more important. The famous story about Dovr Melech with Michal. Right, the David Mecharke b'chol Eizes. They brought up the the Aron um, to where to Yerushalayim. Um, uh, I think this was about when they brought it to Yerushalayim. The David Mecharke b'chol Eizuf Nei Hashem. And David was dancing with all his energies and all of his might in front of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Well, Aron Hashem Bo Ir David came to the city of David. And Michal Bashol Nishka for Barachaloin. As the pesukim continued, that Michal is watching. I hate to say it, in her eyes, in horror. She's watching David uh, belittle himself in, in the way she saw it uh, in front of all of, the, all of his population, all of the people. And, uh, and David should be king. He's the king of, uh, of Klai Israel. And this is what he's doing. He's, he's dancing like a, some kind of a, a jokester or something. I mean, what, what's the deal? And she mamish railed into him. She sees how he's dancing. The timer... And she says, What kind of glory did, the, did you bring to the position of the king of Israel? That you revealed yourself today to the, in the, eye, to the eyes of the maidservants of the servants. Like somebody who would reveal one of the empty, shallow, nothing people of Christ. Well, that's how you acted today. See, mom, she mamish let him have it. And unfortunately, she was wrong, okay? And she should not have let him have it. She should never have spoken to, to that way. And the, 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 it's a scary thing because, you know, the parsha ends with one very succinct statement that Michal never had a child. She was, and, you know, clearly, I didn't really go through them all the Mepharshim just now, but you can clearly see the, the connection to some degree of her not appreciating what it is to, stay, to dance the Kavar Hashem. David answered her back, uh, you know, strong. Okay, when it comes to dancing in front of Hashem, who chose me instead of your father to be king, yes, I'm going to dance. Yes, I'm not going to hold myself back. Yes, I'm not going to feel that I'm too important. Yes, and I will rejoice in front of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I'm ready to humble myself even more than I already humbled myself. And I'm very happy to be a shuffle in his eyes. I'm going to prava, uh, cover that Torah and cover Malchus in front of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. 
I mean, I, whoever I am, I only, ha- I only am that. I only have whatever I have as far as any type of cover from my, is, from my Kodesh Baruch Hu. So who am I to now say that I'm not going to give it my all and dance with all my heart and all my soul in front of my Kodesh Baruch Hu? V'nemar, and furthermore, the Pesach says until him, I'll speak about your statutes in front of kings. I'm not going to be embarrassed. I'm not going to do anything to sort of adjust my behavior for what the expectation of other kings are from other nations. I'm going to speak, I'm going to, uh, speak the way I, I would speak in terms of, of uh, representing Torah. I'm going to dress the way I would dress. I'm going to wear my tzitzis. I'm going to do what I need to do. I'm not going to be embarrassed. So this is a quality of somebody who is, has hachna. To know when to stand up and to know when to uh, give oneself over to Kodesh Baruch Hu, and to, to be ready to subjugate one's own ego and one's own sense of, of, of glory and even you know, proper honor for the sake of a Kodesh Baruch Hu. But it's, not, it, it's, it's a little bit of a challenging tightrope because it isn't like we can do that at all times. Kavad HaTayr is an important thing. We have to you worry about the way we dress and the way we act. I mean, these are things that, that a Tamil Chacham needs to be sensitive to. But when it comes to to dancing and it comes to celebrating and standing up for the glory of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, well then we, we don't take on any importance in that situation. Hanoga Shminasi, the eighth uh, attribute that a humble person possesses, is she aspikloi emsoi hapanasu shemizdamloi v'yeshesho. Person's happy and comfortable with whatever HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives them. That's what I have, it's good, not a problem. V'kiwan shenafshoi hamisavi hi bezuya, since, as far, from this po- p- person's point of view, the part of his nefesh, the part of his soul that desires physical things, we are human beings and we have physical needs and physical desires, but this person's already gotten to the perspective with, with that desire, is bizuya. It's, it's, a, it's a cheapened thing, it's, it's shameful in his eyes. He knows that this is not important. And there's no... There's no uh, Value. There's, it's all lacking any value. There's no point to all of this. You're running after the you know fancy cars and the new Lexuses and all the you know the, all the you know gimmicks and all the stuff that's going on today. You know, new this and a new that. It's it's all pointless. It's not. There's no. Uh, doesn't have any chashivas to him. Vuchinech osol is apek mitavoseha hagashmis, and you've trained your soul uh, through your hard work to be happy. And to uh, to be comfortable, and uh, you know, not to be needing any more tivis physical desires. But rather, you know, to, to totally diminish the importance of physical attainment, so that I can focus my energies and my goals on spirituality. So you can't have you can't have both. It's it's come out impossible. If if you if you make physicality your priority. And that will be your priority. And if it's spirituality, uh, then you, you're going to look at all this physical stuff as, as being a, a distraction. It's a mere distraction. It doesn't really uh, do anything for me, and I'm not going to be enamored by it. Kamosh Amad Avra Melech, as Avra Melech said, Derech Mitzvay Secha Orutz Kisar Chivlibi. When, if I have the Menuchas Nefesh, and my heart is sort of, you know, relaxed and then and, and uh, comfortable, then uh, it's after your mitzvah that I will run. So you have to, you need the menu chasnefesh, you need the, you know, the uh, being free of, 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 you know, any needs for any running after taivis. If once you do that, then the focus only becomes derech mitzvah, or I run after your mitzvahs. So that's very, very important that the physical world and all of the trappings of the physical world are not important to this individual. Hanagat Shias, what about the ninth one? There are ten total, so we're close to finishing finishing this parak. Hanagat Shias, he shiyase nekama bereshoim lechvada bore. You can't be afraid, and this is again a little bit of a contradiction because people who are humble tend to be very reserved and very, you know, uh, docile a little bit. But that's not humility. Uh, being docile is not being humble. Okay, being humble is having a completely proper perspective of your role in this world. And if, uh, if, you're, if you have the right perspective, if a Russia stands up and starts to attack Torah and does anything that's de- denigrating to Torah, you're ready to 
to exact uh, revenge. There's no games. Re- you're ready to fight and stand for Kovar HaTayr. Okay, and Kovar HaBayr, for the, or- the honor of Hashem. We do say the Sayach and the Adam Binyan of who? Okay, and the general attribute of this person to let things go, you know, he hurt me, whatever, he didn't uh, pay me exactly what he's supposed to pay me, you know, this, you know, he didn't look at me the right way, didn't give me the right, all these things you're generally letting go. So your mida, your general attribute of, of being very forbearing of people, you cannot allow that type of perspective to enter into your thinking when the sin was against Hashem. You can be in honor of by yourself. When the sin is against you, let it go. Don't worry about it. It's all, it's all uh, it should be a kapara. It's not a big deal. You're not going to take it seriously. But when it's against Hashem, that's a whole different story. Or if people are speaking about uh, God's prophets or his, his you know, sainted individuals or his chosen people. A special, you know, great leaders of the generation. Those are people that we have to stand up for. And we've seen even in our generation that we've had, unfortunately, episodes where certain great people are denigrated and Taka, there's been, there's been gatherings, Kavad HaTayra, the yeshiva world stands up, people are being attacked, people are being put down, you, uh, there's a, a sense of responsibility. We have, to, we have to stand up. So that's not where you, you manifest humility. This is not the time. Okay, there are plenty of other times, but not, not here. And you can't act towards people who monetarily abuse or fraud uh, other people the way you would act if they defrauded you. Again, you have to make that split. Okay, they ripped you off, they lied to you, they cheated you, whatever. You want to let it go, that's the way it should be. But somebody else, this, this guy is ripping other people off in the neighborhood and, and lying to them and whatever it is and, and, uh, and uh, embezzling or all types of crazy monetary crimes, that, then you can't let it go. Then you can't say, ah, oh, it's okay, it's okay, don't make a big deal. No, no. That's for you to say when it's your issue. But when it's somebody else's issue... Now is the time to fight. Now is the time to stand up. You can't let people being pushed around. It's again. It's so interesting how, even though Kadosh Baruch Hu expects it from great people, the great people can't be expecting it from all the other people. That's not my job to expect other people to you know to let it go. That's the, that's up to them to do. But if I see that iniquity, I see that uh, those transgressions. You got to fight it, and you got to stand up. You got to let people know, and you got to you got to fight the riches. You have to go and defend the oppressed. And you have every responsibility to help the person get his money back and not to, and to basically um, defend the, um, the uh, downtrodden and the ones who've been damaged. In the morning, uh, you're called to uh, justice. And save and uh, uh, retrieve the stolen items from the hands of those who have been have been stolen from. I will break the teeth of those who are the sinners. Uh, Eov was saying that I stand up for the for the downtrodden. I stand up for the oppressed, and I I fight the uh, the aggressors. And you try to teach people. The right way, the way of service to Hakadosh Baruch Hu, and you have to rebuke them. And you can even shame them about their bad actions. Again, you have to obviously, you have to make sure it's going to be effective. You got to, you know, make sure, make sure that what you're doing is hopefully going to reach its mark. Or sometimes, even if you don't, at least you're standing up to make a protest. That, that sometimes also is important. That even though you're not going to be successful, but no one's going to think that you just let it happen. And you have to command them and teach them to do the right thing. And to warn them from doing anything that's, that's evil. Right, exactly. That's, that's right. That was really the first part in terms of, of the tzaddikim. And now... So the first part really was covered at Torah and covered Shemayim. You got to stand up. You got to fight. You got to be strong. And now 
this, this part is dealing with the downtrodden of people who are oppressed financially that you also have to stand up for them as well. Even though I've told you earlier that on a personal level, wipe it you let it go and wipe it, wipe it away and those, you know, don't make a big deal about it, but not when it comes to the community. When there are other people being harmed, then it's this person's job to stand up. Correct, correct. That's right, that's right. Um, right, biyadoy um, ubushoinoy. And you have to warn them from doing anything wrong, whether it be physically with their hands or bilshono with their mouths, with their tongues, with their speech. You gotta, you gotta stand up and you gotta fight uh, wrongdoing. Kemeta vicholta, to the best of your ability. These are loses, it's initial kimsiva loses, and you have to try to, to um, adjudicate and to um, administer the punishment that a Baruch Hu demands be given for any given offense. Leilish onish magilam, for those who deserve a particular punishment. And don't start now when it's your job to stand up and do what needs to be done. Now you're going to be the big honor of, and yeah, it's, you know, I'm going to move away from the limelight, let, you know, sort of let other people or let nobody handle it. I mean, again, if, if somebody else is doing it, then maybe you don't have to push your way in. But if, if you're that person in that situation who needs to make it happen, then that's what you got to do. Koshemar al Pinchos, as Pinchos says, Vayamoy Pinchos, Vayifalel, Vatar Magefa. Pinchos stood up and he prayed and he stopped the Magefa. The Choshol at Sokla Dovadar at all, and it was considered for, uh, in Pinchos's merit, a, a righteous act forever. Okay, this is how Kadesh Baruch Hu sees that when people are willing to stand up and stop the plague and do what, what needs to be done, this is an, an incredible schus. So it's that strength with that humility working side by side. They're working together. You're, you're willing to fight and willing to stand for truth, even at the same time that you're self-effacing and, and literally looking the other way when it comes to personal issues and personal hurt. Hanhoga is a serious and the tenth and final um, Hanhoga of the ten Hanhoga is what it has to have is she daber ma'at of kol namuch. Okay, um, I guess maybe, was it uh, Teddy Roosevelt who uh, stole this um, from, from uh, the Chos uh, Avos? But you speak a little bit and softly. He didn't say quite that way, but um, he added, uh, you know, um, carry a big stick, right? But okay, so we don't, he's not talking about the stick, but the idea of speaking softly with a low tone, he might be don't be overly, you know, the frivolity should be held down to a minimum, he might be shava b'shem Hashem, I feel MS, don't, people swear, don't swear, what do we swear? A lot of people, oh, I swear, I swear, I swear, they're swearing all over the place, slow down, okay? Don't be swearing b'shem Hashem, even when it's true. So that's something that a person should, should get into the habit of doing. And it's, it's, I don't know, it's a strange thing that you see, uh, I see kids sometimes who just are very much, I swear, Rabbi, I swear, what are you swearing for? Just tell me what happened. Just what do you have to swear about it? For Yala al And. Except the theory is if you say you're swearing it, you're supposed to believe him because it's the honest truth. Well. So I think. Somehow that's been taken out of context because if you swear it has to be true, but they was yeah, but we, it with straight lies. Uh, yeah, but we don't even we, when we go to court we affirm. Right. We don't even swear when we're standing in front of a judge. You know, swearing is uh, a test. Yeah. It's, yeah. He says, um, okay, well, yalo shalom sheke. Make sure that no falsehood comes on on a person's tongue. Well, yeshe bechevers, but the other more iskim betzchik. With Varm Betalim, and if then don't sit amongst people who are always involved in levity and the uh, Varm Betalim, and I don't know if poker games, you know, fit into this, or other types of uh, gatherings that we. What? You didn't know that we have a poker game on the opposite Tuesday night of your share? I did not know that. Okay, but there are there are poker games around that I that I do it's know. Not a hot poker game. Okay, poker I, I figured it'd be mahjong for the ladies, but okay. Um, anyway, <laughs> but. So, um, so it, it, one should not be hanging around those types of places with his, with his tzchok and varm betalim, which is basically waste of time things. 
of Shamona Amishtashim them don't rejoice in the types of pleasure that everybody else goes crazy for. The Asazos Mito Chachnov the Shiflos. And when you refrain from these activities, don't do it out of sort of a pomposity that, you know, I'm above this stuff. And, and you walk around like, you know, again, it's holy in that perspective. Don't have it come from that point of view. Lomita Gaiva Visnasa is not from haughtiness. Um, I'm sorry. The Yasad Mito Chachnov Shiflos, make sure it's done from a sense of, of true humility and lowness, not from pomposity and, and conceit. Like Yemiyah says, I have never sit, I don't sit in the company of those who are playing around and overly rejoicing in the frivolity on types of levity. These are not places where a, a serious person should be. A serious person should try to avoid losing you know, one's, one's balance. And that's why this whole notion, you know, this crazy you know, uh, phrase, what, what happens here stays here. You know, the whole notion that you know, when you go, to, you go on vacation, you go to different places, then you're acting differently and it's not who you really are, but it's okay you know, for, for vacation time, you can throw off the yarmulkin, you know, forget about you know, who you are. That's not an acceptable concept within Jewish life. That's why it's a beautiful thing, beautiful word, that um, Yisachar is compared to Hamar. Okay, Yisachar are the leaders of Torah. They were the Yodei Bina. They had tremendous uh, insights into Torah. They're the ones Yisachar was learning Torah in Zvulun was supporting them. And uh, the question's asked, why would uh, Moshe compare Yisachar Chamor Gorim? It could be a, a beautiful a tribe of Yisachar to a Chamor. I mean, if you want to compare to somebody who handles a load, horses also handle loads, and they're such beautiful animals. They're, you know, they're, uh, they have this sort of sense of uh, royalty and this, you know, ma- majesty about them. So why, why not compare uh, Yisachar to a horse? as opposed to a donkey, nobody gets enamored with a donkey. And the beautiful answer given is because there's a fundamental, fundamental difference between a horse that carries a load and a donkey that carries a load. A horse, when it wants to rest, you have to take the load off the back of the horse. It cannot rest with the load on. So you have to take it off, and then it can rest, and then you have to put it back on and it proceeds. But a donkey is an animal that, in order to rest, all it has to do is stop. You don't have to unload it. It keeps the burden on its shoulders even while it's resting. So, so a person, Yisachar, who represents Torah, you have a right to rest. You can take some time off. You can relax. But you never throw the load off. Your responsibility of who you are as a Jew always stays on. You know, a horse would have the connotation that I'm, I'm free now. I threw the load off and, you know, now I can do whatever I want. And that's so not... Those are really better animals than horses. I guess they're, they're more useful. I guess, yeah, donkeys People are more useful. We think of mules as lesser. We always think about that. I mean, like... Well, because, we, because we're talking about... If, when, because when you're running the Preakness or the Kentucky Derby, you want a horse. I'm not even thinking of it in terms of that. I'm just thinking about, like, working. You know, wise. you know, I think... First, I mean, I a mule is, isn't a mule... Um, a donkey. No, a donkey... A mule is, I think, a, a cross between a horse and a donkey. Oh, something like that. Yeah, I think a mule is whatever. You mean a donkey's not a mule? I believe so. I mean, I, I oh, don't don't don't, don't go to the bank. Syrian, don't go to the bank on this. Syrian, yeah, a mule. yeah, a mule. A mule is a cross, but uh, you can, yeah, you can look it up. Anyway, but up but the point is that um, yeah, a donkey in a certain sense is a is a sort of better animal in that regard. That you don't have to if you're if you're taking we're a load, workers. right? We're definitely. <laughs> Well, even though it's a donkey, it's a workhorse. A work donkey. Okay, so I think, I mean, maybe it's could I to wait, maybe start Perik Zion when we get drier weather and we get the crowd back in Bezashem. Oh, it's only four minutes. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, thanks so much. Yeah.